What's up, y'all? This is MGOVA bringing y'all episode 7 on my Cleveland Fantasy Draft Association. And I have two games for y'all today. My first game is against the Atlanta Hawks. They were actually first in the conference. And this was always going to be a challenging game. Monte Ellis is actually, I think, second in scoring in this, in this fantasy league. And he's just a goddamn beast. And there's Ray Allen getting ready for the game, my leading scorer. And the beast is on my team. So let's see if you can match up with Monte Ellis against the best team in the in the NBA today in this game. So right here the tip off. We end up getting the tip. And let's just get this thing get this thing underway. So Monte Ellis this game was honestly putting me to shame with all these I mean he was just hitting ridiculous shots, crossovers around the backs. Look at this. I mean he's like Derrick Rose, getting the foul. Really nothing I could have done about that right there. And the Hawks were just a really good team that had Gerald Wallace. They had Amon Shumpert, one of the best young up-and-coming rookies. And they all performed at a high level against me away from home. Like a true championship team in adverse conditions, they were able to perform right there. Monte Ellis is able to hit that jumper. I'm actually winning by three in the first quarter, but you'll see what happens as the game starts to continue. And in, in the end of the first quarter, Monte Ellis gets the bucket and gets the steal and goes coast to coast for the jam. And I was just appalled at how ham he was going on me. I was just getting destroyed. And right here, Lamar Scrotum misses the shot. But Chris Anderson's right there for the rebound to give them that huge momentum bucket to not really let the game slip out of hand. They're really playing like a veteran team. And right here, Marshawn's going to use the screen and go inside for the for the nice little jumper. The rookie, Marshawn Brooks, doing work as usual, boy. Yeah! And Gerald Wallace. I think he swatted that. I don't even know, but I got the turnover. Monte Ellis is going to go ahead and boom it on Kevin Love. And I'm just... I mean, Monte Ellis was just doing work. I don't know what else to say about Monte Ellis besides these highlights. There's really no words that I can describe watching these highlights. Dude had 16 points in the first half. And I think he scores again right here, doesn't he? goes around the back and gets the foul. Like a true veteran. He just, I don't even know. That was like a Paul Pierce kind of play right there. But right here, going into the the end of the first half, going into the third quarter, Booby Gibson's going to go around the screen and make it rain from three, bitch! Oh, uh, my voice did not go as high as I wanted it to do. Wait, let me redo that. Bitch! There we go. But anyways, Anton Jamison's going to come right back with a three of his own to really stifle that little nice run we had at the end of the quarter. So look, going into halftime, I was shooting 47%. They were shooting 42%. And I was performing pretty well against the best team in the NBA. But plays like this are the kind of plays that just get the ball rolling towards the towards a loss, to be honest with you. That was just really good shot by Lamar Odom. And there's Darren Collison with the awkward little double clutch shot. But real talk, shots like that that Lamar Odom just hit, those will really take away your momentum. And they're just, they're buzz kills, to be honest, to the fans, to me it's just I don't know there's a lot of huge energy plays like that play and he's gonna make no mistake from the line really just sucking all the energy out of my team and right here they're gonna go for another energy play Monte Ellis let's watch the slam cam no we're not watching it you already know how we do in here there's Monte Ellis he makes no mistake from the free throw line so they're gonna go down low in the post to Lamar Odom and they're picking it up it's a four-point game, and Lamar Odom's going to get the and one. Make no mistake from the free throw line. So Monte Ellis misses the three-pointer. We get the ball. We're trying to push it. Six-point game. Two minutes to go. And Ray Allen from the parking lot. Are you kidding me? Can somebody give this man his car keys so he can drive back to half court to go to where he shot the ball? Because, I, I mean, I don't even know where he was. I don't think he was in the stadium. I don't know where he was. But anyways, Monte Ellis is going to go ahead and miss that jumper, but it doesn't matter because Anton James is there to clean up the mess. I don't know how many hustle plays we had at the end of this game that really caused us to lose, but they really kind of piled up and our team just gave up at the end. Really a, a sad effort, just depressing. Monte Ellis had 34 points. Nobody could defend him, didn't matter what I did. And when your star player goes 5 for 14 from the field, it's really hard to win. And right here, I got proposed this trade, and if I had changed that first round pick to this year maybe I would have done it and the thing is Clay Thompson is a really good shooting guard but I already have Marshawn Brooks and Ray Allen so I really didn't need another shooting guard but anyways moving on into the second game my record is 8 and 10 coming into the Timberwolves Stadium they are 14 and 7 they're in the top three in their conference 
So there's my starting lineup. Ray Allen, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Love, Darren Collison, and the Turkish delight, Omer Ashik. And the Minnesota Timberwolves had Stephen Curry and Shannon Brown. That's a pretty good backcourt when you're talking athleticism and three-point shooting. So this is a really daunting task ahead of me playing this really good team. So th these are the last two games in this episode. There's something you don't see every day. Ray Allen missing a free throw, but as uh, Shannon Brown gets his layup right here. But yeah, these two teams that I played in this episode, the Timberwolves are like the top three in their conference, and the Hawks are number one. So, you know, we'll see what happens with these two results. But <clears throat> in the Hawks result, I was actually not too... I wasn't too uh, displeased. I mean, we really played well up until the last quarter. We just couldn't finish, and that's that's generally what happens when a team's better than you in basketball. So they were just they just outclassed us at the end. They just had that that gloss, that sleekness that championship team really has. But anyways, Tyrus Thomas making that layup. You know, we're getting there. We're getting there with our team. And Ray Allen's gonna step behind the three-point line and make it rain from three, bitch. Ray Allen was making it rain from three like a mug this whole game. Shannon Brown's gonna miss that shot. We're gonna get the rebound. We're gonna give it to Kawhi Leonard. And I think you guys know what's coming. Get dunked on, young fella. With the boom. That is a boom. And one. He makes no mistake from the free throw line. You already know he's not making any mistakes right there. And Kevin Love, right here in the post, gonna kick it out to Ray Allen. And he is gonna make it splishity splash. Uh, splash Town Mountain, sing that song. I don't even know what else to say about all these shots I'm making. But Marshawn Brooks at the end of the second quarter, splash! To give us a four point lead going into halftime. And he's screaming at the crowd, getting them pumped up. I was honestly pumped up during this game because I was getting all these. Huge plays going my way to start off the second half. You got Kevin Love with the hustle offensive rebound put back. And I, I was feeling good. I'm not gonna lie with I'm not gonna lie to you. I was feeling real good about how I was playing. I was feeling real positive about the the outcome of this game and the result that I was gonna get as Ray Allen takes it to a double digit lead with a three pointer. Four for five from three. We have a double digit lead against the third overall team in the NBA and third in the Western Conference. And they are just, they, they're kind of relentless, but at this point, we're really dominating them. They actually go on a little bit of a run after that timeout, and I'm really starting to get nervous. Stephen Curry gives it to Allen, and he's going to hit that little jumper to make it a one-possession game again. So it goes from being double-digit to one possession that quickly. That's awful. And Darren Collison misses that shot. I'm, I get the lead back up by seven with five minutes to go. All I have to do is hold this for the win. But Shannon Brown, let's watch the slam can, guys. Hell no, you're not watching that. Get that off my screen. But Shannon Brown hit that, give him some momentum. And I, I mean, I was literally throwing the game away. I was having turnovers like, I don't, like nobody's business. I was missing shots. Kevin Love right there hitting that shot. I, they actually took the lead by five points, and Kevin Love makes it a one possession game again so with two minutes to go I get to steal with Ray Allen the huge effort play and he's gonna get the hop step layup to make it a one point game I end up taking the lead and Stephen Curry takes the lead right back out of my hands one minute and 30 seconds please ignore his block hands don't know why that's in there don't know what that glitch is everybody seems to have it but fuck it so I give the ball to Luke Ridenauer I'm looking for the lead Luke Ridenauer with the ball gives it to Ray Allen pump fake Dribbles to, the, dribbles to the right side. He's going to post him up. And Ray Allen out of the post is too clutch in the fourth quarter. Let's go, Ray Allen. One point game. Cleveland is beating Minnesota. So Shannon Brown right here calling everyone off. Going to give it to Stephen Curry. Back to Shannon Brown. Shannon Brown wants this shot. He's trying to run down the clock so they can get a shot. I don't know. I feel like he should have shot that ball earlier so that they, if, even if I missed my shot, they would have got the ball back and I have to foul, but I don't know. Whatever. He ran down the clock. So they're starting to foul me, and I hit all my free throws, and then this happened. This happened. Shannon Brown happened. Amazing happened. I don't know how else to describe this besides amazing. This is just one of those plays that you just have to round of applause and move on just there's nothing really to say about that Shannon Brown hits the three-pointer to send it into overtime and away from home that is a huge buzz kill I thought I had this game one you know 
And in overtime, I was never going to win this game. Yo, away from home, they hit a buzzer beater to send it into overtime. I was having turnover after turnover. They were turned up on defense. They were turned up on offense. On the fast break, you got beautiful ball movement right there to the wall. Dang. But anyways, we ended up losing this game. Thanks for watching, y'all. Kind of a depressing episode. But on a positive note, the episode coming up next will be more exciting with the All-Star break. And stay lavish. Peace.